okay so now what we are going to do is look at how to store the heap okay now there's another uh, in, in this interesting property that we don't need to really maintain the hierarchical structure and uh, we want to store the information about the heap so the earlier modules on binary trees what did we do for every node we had a left child pointer right child pointer and maintain the address of the left child right child and so on right we could do the same way we could do that but we could do it more efficiently uh, in a way that we can just store the heap as an array so this binary tree right the heap is a binary tree uh, can be just stored as an array okay so that's what we're going to see how to how to store a heap as an array so we can do all the manipulations that we want to do on the heap on the array itself we don't have we don't need to maintain the hierarchical structure uh, uh, as a binary tree of course the hierarchical structure is going to be captured uh, in the array in a certain way we're going to see how it is being captured but we don't need to really do things like what we did in the earlier modules on binary tree and binary search tree by maintaining left child pointer right child pointer explicitly and accessing the nodes based on the i uh, addresses of those child nodes and so on all right so let us see how to do this so this is a max heap right we can do the same thing for a min heap all we need to uh, maintain it is is essentially complete right and um, so given a binary tree that is essentially complete we can store that uh, tree structure as an array okay so the rule is this so uh, here we are going to have how many nodes 10 nodes starting from index 0 to 9 now we are going to given a binary tree with just uh, the nodes without the ids you should be able to come up uh, with a way to uh, assign the ids of these nodes how in the top down left to right fashion so start with the root node so that is node 0 then it's two child nodes so top down so started with this level then go to one level down then left to right so this is node 1 and node 2 then go to the next level left to right 3 4 5 6 then go to the next level left to right 7 8 9 so that is the order in which you should assign the ids for the nodes top down left to right okay so once you assign the IDs of the nodes, you get a count of how many nodes are there. So you have here nodes ID 0 to 9, so 10 nodes. So that is like n equals 10, the number of nodes. Okay. So we're going to create an array of that many size. So uh, it's an array of 10 nodes, uh, 10 integers basically. So nodes uh, index 0 to 9 for the array. And just write the data of the nodes in the array. So node 0, index 0, we have data 10. Index 1, you have data 8. Index 2, we have data 9. At index 3, we have 7. Index 4, we have 6. At index 5, we have 5, 6, 5, and so on. Right? So, um, you write the data of the nodes in the array. So, now, uh, this is the property. Now, among the nodes um, uh, or the data in the array, the nodes from index 0 to n over 2 minus 1. So, n is here what? 10. n over 2 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So, the nodes from index 0 to 4, right, are going to be the internal nodes of this binary tree. So, index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. These are the nodes these are the internal nodes starting from index 5 we are having what leaf nodes right so the property is this nodes from index 0 to n over 2 minus 1 in the array are going to be the internal nodes and nodes from the next index so if this is index n over 2 minus 1 the next index is going to be n over 2 right so nodes from index n over 2 to the last index n minus 1 are going to be the index values entries for the leaf nodes okay so that is the property so if you store the uh, essentially complete binary tree which is a heap 
uh, in the top down left right fashion like this we can satisfy this property that nodes from index 0 to NO2 minus 1 will be the internal nodes of that heap and nodes from index NO2 to N minus 1 will be the leaf nodes of that heap okay that's the first property now the second property is now uh, remember uh, still in order to be able to access this binary tree the heap we need to know what is the left child of a certain node what's the right child of a certain node and so on yes so we can also do that here so for uh, a node at index j its two child nodes are going to be located at index 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 2 and provided these are valid indexes so i'll come back and what i meant by valid indexes let us pick an example uh, let us pick uh, uh, let's go back okay so let us say node 1 that is j equals 1 so at index 1 j equals 1 the child nodes of index uh, j are at 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 2 so j equals 1 so 2 times 1 plus 1 is going to be 3 so that is one child node and 2 times 1 plus 2 so 2 times 1 plus 2 is 4 so for node at index j its two child nodes are at index 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 2 now what i meant by the valid index so this 3 is a valid index in this uh, array because the range of index values for the array goes from 0 to n minus 1 which is 9 so when you get the child node index in this case 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 2 you should compare uh, check its numerical value so in this case 3 is what less than or equal to 9 so that's a valid index 4 is less than or equal to 9 that's a valid index so that means this node is a what a pure internal node it has both child nodes okay so let us pick another uh, node say node 4 that is j equals 4 so its child node index values are going to be 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 2. So 2j plus 1 is going to be 2 times 4 plus 1. That's going to be 9. That's a valid index because 9 is less than or equal to 9. But what about 2j plus 2? For 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 is a, not a valid index for this array because the valid index for the array is 0 to 9. So that's the way we are going to decide whether a right, left child or right child exists for the node. So for node at index 4, uh, it will have a left child because its left child index 2j plus 1 is less than or equal to the last valid index which is n minus 1 which is 9. Now it doesn't have a right child because its right child index is going to be 2j plus 2 which is going to be 10 in this case and that's not a valid index because it's outside of the range 0 to 9. Let us, you can do that for any node. Let us pick node 5, index 5. Its left child is going to be at 2j plus 1. So 2 times 5 plus 1 is going to be 11 and 11 is not a valid index for this array. Similarly, right child. 2 times uh, 5 plus 2 which is 12 is not a valid index whereas this uh, node what 2 times 6 plus 1 is what 13 is not a valid index so it doesn't have a left child and it doesn't have a right child either 2 times 6 plus 2 is 14 that's not a valid index so that's one way you can access a node and its two child nodes okay if they exist depending on the index now we can do the other way too uh, so what we just saw is given a, a node we can access its child nodes so now given um, a child node we can also access its parent node so something like this so if you are given a child node at index j what is the index of its parent node so its parent node is going to be at index j minus 1 whole thing divided by 2 so let us see an example for that so let us pick say index 7 which is this so what where what is the index of the node at index 7 so j minus 1 was 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by 2 so that's going to be 3 so that's the index of this parent node so 7 minus 1 over 2 is 3 that's the index of the parent node 
Similarly, if you pick j is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3 divided by 2, this integer division. So its parent node is at index 1. So that is how you can access the parent node of a child node. So you can do both ways, right? So you can access a node and its two child nodes or given a node, you can access its parent node. So using all these properties, we can uh, store the heap, a binary tree as an array and access everything from using an array itself. We don't need to really store the hierarchical structure in memory. Okay, so the array itself captures the hierarchical structure, right? Let me stop here for a minute. I'll